Um, and I want you guys to, to leave a comment about that, uh, you know, kind of what you, what you think about that. But it just, they're hitting these electronic devices very precisely, and they don't have nanoparticulates or, or implants in them. So it kind of just makes me think, you know, they do use these redundant systems like implants, nanoparticulates, uh, bioirelevant feedback loop to our brain and our nervous system. They do use these things, but, you know, you know, especially for, I think, remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation, they have to have those things to get readouts, um, you know, on your brain and your nervous system, uh, basically your bio functions. But, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if they could hit you in the head or the eye or the throat or, you know, the leg or the chest um, without any of that. And that is a very dangerous concept to me. Um, because they are doing that to electronic devices, so I don't see why they couldn't do it to a person that they are surveilling with uh, through the through the wall, you know, radar surveillance or remote surveillance. However, they're doing it. Um, so I want y'all's thoughts on that. Um, kind of, kind of, you know. And there's a park ranger right there, but it's just a park ranger. He doesn't have one light on. Um, it just got me thinking. Kind of like I know they do use all these redundant systems on us, um, you know, ways to ways to get a get a GPS lock on us, you know, implants, nano nano particulates, nanotechnology, um, bioirelevant feedback loop if they're by you for a long time. And there's a one light truck right there. Um, but that made me think that you know if they are surveilling you, they could probably hit you. Um, without any of those things um, and they probably do use those things to make the targeting more specific or especially for um, you know putting the non-ionizing radiation and there's a truck right in between with one light but they you know to, to get a more to do remote neural manipulation remote neural monitoring I'm sure that they need some kind of uh, nano particulates or an implant in your body but to hit you on the outside of your body with a directed energy weapon hit I just don't think they would need anything. They would just need to surveil you because they're apparently surveilling they're they're surveilling enough so where they can see where these electronic devices are and then hit them and I can feel the warmth of the directed energy beam, you know, hitting those electronic devices um that they want to, you know, annoy me and hit them or actually shut down Dave CD so they can get uh so the entrainment works better for whatever they're doing. Um, but I kind of, I kind of got off the subject. It, it just made me think about that, um, because they, they are hitting those devices and they don't, you know, I just know those things don't have any of those redundant systems, uh, that they use, uh, for, for delivery mechanisms, basically, you know, um, and it got me really thinking about that. But I kind of want to go back, I'm going to, I'm going to maybe drive down this street again, drive down another main street. Cause it is a it's a time during the day where traffic well traffic is kind of bad but it shouldn't be um but it got me thinking about that so good news uh you know good news the um a lot of my family without me even mentioning it to them was looking into the cuba em embassy attack and correlating it and there's a one light white car i didn't get it too good uh, they were already correlating that with what was going on with me uh, before I even talked to them about it, which is uh, That's a great sign guys because my my just you know in the, on the microcosm level You know, I know I am just talking about my family and my situation But uh, you know my, my parents are very mainstream media people, you know, they listen to uh, I don't know. I think my dad listens to Rush Limbaugh uh, he listens to a lot of the, you know, you know, radio, AM radio shows, uh, and he watches Fox News, basically, and, and then the main, main state, main channels for news. So they got that information from very, very mainstream news. Um, we've got to hit on that story. We've got to, uh, you know, spread it around on Facebook, spread it around everywhere. That is a huge vindication for us of what we are saying. Because if somebody says, oh, I've never heard about this, we would have heard it already, we can say, well, you have heard about it. it uh, the Cuban embassy attack, they were using uh, sonic weapon attacks 
which you know I I know that those, they were you know directed energy weapon systems and not just not just some sonic weapons. Um, it is what TIs are being hit with, but at least you can say. And there's a one light white car across the way. I'm not getting it good. I'm not getting them good because I'm like across the way. Um, so we can say, and, and you know, I know that uh, at the Russian embassy, and there's another one light gray car, which I didn't get good. I'm sorry, I'm not getting these. Um, and and I know that a while back there there were uh, there was the kind of the same situation. I'm not sure it was as many State Department workers at the Russian embassy, uh, you know, where they they were getting these sonic weapon attacks, directed energy weapon systems attacks. So. I know that it's happened before, but it seems like uh, it seems like now at this point in time, it's being uh, there's more attention being paid to it. Um, more is coming out about this. So, so right now, guys, we are in a good time. We've got to keep fighting. We've got to keep getting this information out. Um, you know, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm you know I'm struggling through. I'm always fighting, kind of fighting to get them out of my brain with remote neural uh, monitoring manipulation fighting to attenuate the directed energy. I, I'm successful uh, to a point, but it, it still is torture. I, I still do have a uh, voice to skull, which is a sound that they transfer through uh, through these directed energy weapon systems. And I have a chatter box where they've recycled and recorded things that they've said and then play them back. And then, you know, I feel like there's about three shifts uh, who, who put in live things, say on the B2K, like, um, let's kill him. They'll say like, let's kill him, you know, uh, in, in, uh, real time. But then they'll have a, a dialogue between a man and a woman where she's kind of saying, uh, you know, turn it off, turn it off. This is evil. Uh, you know, I'm leaving. And then he'll be like, no, we got to put him away. And kind of a, a dialogue like that, a general dialogue so that they can recycle it. Um, they can recycle the general things they say about me and about what they're doing and make it a chatterbox uh, narrative. Um, so, so you know, I'm still fighting. I'm tired as hell. Uh, but, you know, hanging out with my family and them knowing about this, you know, my mom was a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more receptive to me about everything. Um, there's a fire truck, but I'm not sure if it's part of my targeting or anything like that. But I just do want to show it because they do do that sometimes. Um, I also want to talk about, guys, um, Ella Free has uh, a radio show, and I'm going to forget. It's on uh, Revolution Radio. God, I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, Revolution Radio. I, I just listened to, and you can find it on YouTube, on Ella Free's channel. Um, she had a great interview with Karen Stewart. Uh, just a just a great interview on whistleblowing and pretty much uh, the no-touch torture that they're doing to target individuals uh, Kind of Karen's experiences in the NSA uh, It was just a great interview. Uh, Ella is just doing a lot a lot of stuff for the TI community um, I've got it, you know, there, there's a call-in portion for the show um, And I think it was like the second show they didn't have any calls I think because people were just listening um, and people are just finding out about the show, but as TIs, uh, I think it would be a good idea for us to listen and be available uh, for those call-in portions to her show. You know, she's she's doing a lot more um, general whistleblowing topics, um, but you know, if we're there for when they're talking about it, and and we can get in and say, hey, I'm experiencing that stuff. I am a so-called target individual, and bring that onto the show. You know, I'm. You know, she would be very receptive to that. Um, great, a great interview. She's doing a just a awesome, awesome job. Just doing a lot of work, and she's going through so much. Um, and I, I don't even. It's on Saturday, uh, around when her international call took place. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what time it is on Saturday. Her other call took place at around two central for me uh, I think it was one central or two central so um, I think Terry's probably gonna have something like that uh, about that up on his website which is stopgangstalkingcrimes.com um, 
and then Ella's probably going to have it up on uh, freedomfortargetedindividuals.org, freedomfortargetedindividuals.org, uh, the time and how to how to get how to uh, listen to that podcast. So, so TIs, we really need to uh, on Saturdays we need to kind of clear our calendar and uh, and and listen to her show, listen to her podcast. So when she does have call-ins, you know we can be there to kind of uh, you know. Uh, bring in that topic from our perspective um it's just it's a great opportunity it's a really great opportunity and she's doing a great job and i just wanted to say awesome interview ella um you know awesome interview karen uh y'all are both just just great um you know, great activist great activist you're really getting us there um and you know whatever i'm sure whatever the ti community can do to help you guys uh you know we will we'll be there um, so I wanted to mention that. So either go to freedom for targeted individuals dot freedom for targeted individuals dot org, or uh, you know uh, stop gangstalkingcrimes dot com, and I'm sure they'll have some information on that when the show is. It's on Saturday, somewhere around 1 p.m. Central. So it'd be like noon. No, it'd be like 11 or well 11 or noon Pacific time, and then like 2 Eastern time. Uh, I think it's somewhere around there, but I'm not sure of the exact time. I gotta figure that out and then put another video out. Um, I'm trying to think what it, there was something else. Yeah, guys, um, I did want to talk to uh, targeted individuals who are doing YouTube channels, um, who are doing Facebook, um, and who are doing Twitter. Um, I know that I know that like I do this, and there's a the sheriff's. Or I've seen a, I've seen like a, a city police uh, in front of a um, fire marshal earlier. I've been out for a while. I've been out for a while, and I've noticed that uh, they are actually getting some authority figures kind of in my path. Uh, you know, and it's it's a little bit. The frequency is a little bit uh, too much, which I mean is the it's it's happening a little bit too much to be a coincidence. Um, it's because I've been out. I I've been driving around for about hour or an hour and a half so I had to I had to run some errands and then go get that velcro um, but I really wanted to talk to target individuals who are on social media especially guys on YouTube guys and uh, guys and girls uh, target individuals on YouTube because I'm I'm on YouTube um, and so that I mean but but everywhere on social media um, we need to start and you know, personal testimonies are awesome. I do it all the time. You know, I've been doing it for five years, and then, you know, lately I've kind of, uh, you know, kind of I'll give you a general, general how I'm doing because it's just been so long, and it's just the same crap going on and on and on, over and over every day. Um, you know, so I don't want to just keep doing that on a video. But I'd like to encourage you guys to. Um, you know, maybe jumping on some of these conference calls on TalkShoe or FreeConferenceCall.com, and you can find schedules for that. Uh, I think on uh, FreedomForTargetedIndividuals.org and uh, StopGangStalkingCrimes.com, um, and just general stories like the Cuban Cuba embassy, Cuban embassy attack. Um, we need to start getting that news uh, out. You know within our general within our personal testimonies start mentioning it to other TIs and spreading the news on social media um, and also you know liking content uh, you know that, that really ha pertains to our situation and putting it out on social media really using these avenues we have avenues of information um, you know that they have not taken away from us yet um, and we've really got to utilize them really got to utilize them to spread this information um, you know so that eventually you know eventually uh, mainstream media will be forced uh, you know to report on on our information of you know targeted individual citizens around the world being experimented on with this directed energy weapon systems crap um, and then I wanted to say they're they're doing the short-term memory remote neural manipulation on me um, so I can't really remember what I was going to say next. Um, and I actually did. I had something important to say. But usually if I just talk about something else for a second, I can get it back. 
um, because it was kind of important. But yeah, but but guys on YouTube, Twitter.